What's up guys? Broke Investor here giving my two year update. So as many of you know, um, I've been in the game for a very short period of time. Uh, the investing game overall and mainly the dividend investing game, well, which is what my primary focus is. So <clears throat> I'd like to cover uh, some statistics from when I started about two years ago and the progress I have made um, investing in dividends for the past two years. As you can see behind me, it's on the chalkboard, so we can go through it. Um, but before I get started, obviously I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a broke-ass investor. So if you're looking to start investing, you should seek you know, a financial advisor or you should do your own research online. It's all available to you. It depends how, how lazy you are, all right? Anyway, let's get started. So like I said, I got started my first dividend that I ever received was in November of 2017 and I broke it down here by quarters over the past two years so the first quarter being quarter quarter four 2017 I received three dollars and 43 cents in dividends that was only for two months though um, so I'll just continue to go down the line keep in mind um, I'm you know, going, I'm speaking quarter over quarter for those of you that are not seeing this video. Um, so quarter one, 18, 22, 30, quarter two, 18, 37, 53, quarter three, 18, 57, 67, quarter four, 18, 80, 69, quarter one, 19, 107, 28, over a hundred dollars. Woohoo. Quarter two, 19, 141, 48, quarter three, 19, 17016 and the current quarter I'm in right now is qu quarter four I'm at 6009 uh, so obviously it's going up every quarter which is good um, my goal is to raise the dividend month over month over month over month this keeps me um, you know gives me a balanced portfolio on a monthly basis uh, it also keeps me in line makes me you know continue to invest in the right companies, continue to invest companies that raise their dividend, um, and just keeps me on track, because um, I love tracking, uh, you know, everything on a monthly basis. It's a lot of work, but it helps out. So obviously, this is the quarter breakdown. Uh, the dividend income went up every single quarter. Is it enough? No, it's not. That's why, you know, I started too late, so I get screwed. So eventually, I'll get there. Those of you that are younger, you know, the, the earlier you start the better off you'll be so what's the further breakdown beyond that um, everyone talks about monthly dividends everyone loves monthly dividends what dividends pay monthly blah 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 which you know in the end you really really should not care about that I know starting out I get it you want to get paid every single month whether it's a penny whether it's five cents you just want to get paid every month my dog is, seems to always be in the video, so I apologize for the shaking in the background, by the way. Um, so I broke down who pays monthly, who pays quarterly, etc., and how many of each I own. So on a monthly basis, I own six stocks that do pay monthly. Um, cash fronted, uh, cash put towards those stocks around, you know, 3700 uh, 3, which is about 26% of my portfolio. For January, April, July, October months, I own eight stocks, about 3,600, about 25% of my portfolio. Uh, February, May, August, November, I own seven stocks, about 3,100, 21% of my portfolio. Um, and then March, June, September, December, uh, I own 12 stocks, 3,800, about 26% of my portfolio. Uh, the March, June, September, December months are the most popular because it's the quarter end. It's the last month possible that these companies have to pay for the quarter. So that is obviously the most popular month. It's very easy to fill in this month. It's a little harder to fill in the, you know, the January, February month. So keep that in mind. I don't force myself to buy into these months. I actually do find legit companies that are worth a damn. So keep that in mind as well. So yeah, obviously I'm balanced. I have, you know, a fair amount of stocks throughout every single month. I have monthly and I have quarterly. So it's basically, even without these monthly stocks, I'm balanced on a monthly basis with just, you know, with these stocks here. 
So I own 33 different uh, companies, different um, individual companies, and obviously I fronted so far 14380 and I'm still going. So yeah, I started with nothing and I invested every check as I went. You know, if I could. Some checks I couldn't do anything, you know. Bills happen. So I want you to keep that in mind. For those of you that are beginners and you see this number, it may look like a lot. For those of you that have been investing, obviously it's chump change to you, but for beginners that haven't even started, you don't need this amount. I started with nothing. You could, you're could, you better off starting with nothing. That way you learn as you go. You know, you invest as you go. $100, sure, you know. Make the mistakes when you have nothing invested versus 14K or 20K, etc. cetera. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind. Um, sectors. So you definitely want to diversify. Why do you want to diversify? Is to protect yourself. Uh, especially when you're investing in individual companies. Anything can happen at any time to any company. But do you want that to affect your portfolio? Hell no. So you want to invest in not only good companies that you think will survive, but just in case they don't, you want to diversify across different sectors. And you probably can't see because I had to write small to fit it in, but I'll, I'll cover them. Um, I'll just speak to each one. So there's different sectors, basic Materials, um, I own about 3.9% of my portfolio is in the basic material sector. Uh, commission, communication services, 4.5%. Co uh, consumer cyclical, 12.7%. Consumer defensive, 10.2%. Energy, 4.5%. Uh, financial services, 10%. Healthcare, 10%. Industrials, 14.3%. Real estate, 16.96%, technology 9%, and utilities 2%. Anyway, the point I'm getting at is you want this to be somewhat balanced across sectors. You want your money spread across sectors. That way, if one company or one sector is hurting, it's not going to really hurt your portfolio because if when one sector is down, sometimes another is up. So, you know, you want your portfolio to stay, you know, balanced. So anyway, yeah, I'm pretty high on real estate. Um, I don't want to be, but I am. My number one holding in real estate is Apple Hospitality, ticker symbol APLE. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed, you know, and I, I hit the cap with that, luckily. So I'm going to stop investing in that company, but it's a monthly dividend. It's a high yield, and it, I think the company is going to be fine. It's a ho They own hotels, and it's just constant income. But um, yeah, that's bad, 16% in real estate. So as time goes on, I'm going to be investing in other um, sectors like utilities where I'm short on and like basic materials. Um, another one I'm high on is industrials. Again, 3M, MMM, ticker symbol MMM. It's been on sale and it's still on sale and I find myself continuing to buy it. So Waste management is also in the industrial. I've been buying that as well. Um, consumer cyclical is another one. My, you know, that's my th third of the top three. Uh, I just recently got into McDonald's. I like Starbucks and I like Home Depot. So, you know, what can I say? I'm higher in some sectors than others, but it doesn't mean it's right. That's just how it's how my portfolio is set up at the end, at month end, not month end, but for when I closed out October, because um, obviously this is for two years from November 2017 to October 2019. Um, so anyway, the end result after two years, I've made $681.65 in dividends. Total capital, keep in mind this is unrealized capital, which means I'm not selling, I did not sell, is $1,518.65. So if I closed out the books, I sold everything today, I'd be up 135%. And again, I started two years ago, I knew nothing two years ago, I had no money two years ago. So just keep that in mind, you know, as long as you continue to learn and you invest slowly, I think, you know, anyone can do it. It's not freaking rocket science. They want you to think that way so you hire someone, you know, so they could take a cut of your money, but it's really, it's not that hard. So. Do take the time. It's, it is well worth it. 
Um, another thing I'll just cover is my, uh, I know I went over the capital gain, unrealized capital gain. So the top five um, in capital gain over the past two years is Apple, not the hotel, Apple, the iPhone, ticker symbol AAPL, Home Depot, ticker symbol HD, um, Medtronic, ticker symbol MDT. This one I actually just sold out of my portfolio. Come to find out, they're based out of Ireland. When I got paid my dividend, it was net of Ireland taxes at 20%. So, obviously I did not know that, so, you know, I got rid of the stock. I loved, I did like the company, but I just don't want to deal with any additional tax complications. Um, but that's just me. Um, anyway. O, ticker symbol O, uh, Realty Income. They were also in my top five. And last but not least, Starbucks. They've been, they've been blowing up, so... So that's it. I mean, th those are my uh, my top winners, you know, based on capital. So yeah, that's my uh, my the the status of my my uh, portfolio for over the past two years. And let me know where you guys at. How long have you been invested? You know, what's your uh, you know how's your portfolio doing, dividend wise, capital gain wise, etc. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Uh, click like if you did, leave a comment whether you did or did not, and share it to your friends. Alright? Hope you enjoyed it. Broke Investor out. Later.